Hello and welcome. Thanks so much for being with us here on India Today. I'm Chaiti Narula. I'm being joined by some fabulous women. They're all rock stars in their own right. They are content creators, directors, producers, and discussing a very important topic today on Women's Day, moving beyond the tokenism of Women's Day, because 365 days a year should be Women's Day. Uh, let me begin with Guneet first. Thank you all for joining us. Guneet, uh, Beginning with you, how has content changed in the digital era? And when I speak of content, I speak of women-centric content. Uh, very nice to be here, and thank you, Chetty. Um, firstly, I think opportunities have increased. Definitely, the market has expanded. Uh, the audience base has expanded. Uh, it's definitely far more um, audiences that you can reach through the traditional means and especially I think for independent filmmakers it is uh, a boom and uh, and and you know because the because the need of content is so high uh, what is just everything that is not usual does stand out and the conversation at large of having niches up front any niche conversation and also especially by women creators or women mm. filmmakers mm. or uh, women on the screen it's absolutely the most fantastic time i would say that the the you know i from my personal experience from the number of films i've made be it lunchbox be it masan be it um, so many shaitan shahid the the kind of marketing support that i got for paglet for a film like paglet the kind of uh, uh, feedback that i got on paglet uh, mm. and the love that i got mm. it was a netflix release and for me also that was a learning and i really valued that experience so when you immediately get pan india around the world same day that kind of joy you know is a dream for any filmmaker and especially for an independent filmmaker so you you get you get a whole organization celebrating you and your work and putting your co your conversation out there is pre is precious and this is the time right now where we are we are consuming malayalam hmm. cinema we are uniting as a country and um, and we are putting our stories out there you know and for the whole world to see so it's it's amazing very interesting so naomi i want to ask you in a, a film industry and in a content creation industry where it's been largely male centric over the past few years to now the transition after ott platforms are you seeing a uh, more advent of uh, women coming in whether it is creators filmmakers actresses and would you attribute that to ott See, Chaiti, the, the biggest thing that's happened is that when we make content for uh, platforms like Netflix, we don't say woman-centric. You know, this woman-centric label itself is something which is which was exclusive to films. But when you're making content for Netflix, for streaming, mm. Uh, mm. we don't say this is a woman-centric show. It's a show, which I think is a huge step. You know, you don't say this is woman-oriented content. Mm. Now, coming to the show that I am part of, like, the fabulous life of Bollywood wives. For me, this is a mainstream show which is about four women in their 40s. Now, this is a demographic which is largely ignored by mainline uh, cinema. Where do you have that? You know, you don't have women who are touching 50. You don't have uh, stories about them. But uh, you manage to do that. And it's not its not niche. It's mainline. It's mainstream. And there's no self-conscious effort, you know. There's no ham-handed effort to say, yeah, this is about women power. This is about this. It's very normal. It's regulation. And I think that's what... Uh, that's what's happened. It's the regularization and the normalization, where you don't you don't pitch your show as, oh, you know, it is about a strong woman. It is about a strong character, and I think that's the biggest thing that's happened. So, Chani, in that case, you know, every year on Women's Day, we are overcompensating somewhere with all the florists in pink and you know the free manicures and pedicures in salons to you know celebrating women on that one day. But I do know. You are heading that fabulous team at India Today as well, a company which is headed by women, with primetime anchors being women as well. Not even once at that company do you feel you're a woman, and hence, you know, you might probably have to take a back seat. It is meritocracy that is being rewarded, and do you see that transition happening finally? So, <clears throat> yes, I think, uh, I mean, I wear dual hats, and that's how I'm sitting here. I am a journalist as well as uh, heading a vertical which produces documentary series now to start with. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, a few years ago uh, on, on news channels, which is mainstream news channel, for example, only men would do prime time. 
And today you switch on a channel like Aaj Tak, it's only women. We have no men doing prime time right now. And uh, I don't think it's a conscious choice that happened. It's a choice and then those women just proved that they were so good. And even women who were heading, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, women who head, um, uh, you know, different verticals in our group, uh, that is just, I think, merit. And I'm, 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 I think we need to move beyond the talk, uh, tokenism of it. And I think that uh, women are out there, they're proving themselves, and they're getting to do uh, what they're doing. And it's really, really interesting, really, right now, honestly. You know, so not for a single moment, even Pratiksha and your organization, would you feel that you're a woman? Because that, I'm sure that thought doesn't even come across in your mind because you all are such a women-centric, women-led company at Netflix India and globally. Um, yeah, uh, you know, we have a, a global workforce, uh, more than 50% is actually women, more than 50% of our global leadership mm. um, is also uh, women. But I don't think, I mean, I'm pretty conscious of the fact that I'm woman, but not because of mm -hmm. the, 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 mm. the limitations, but also, but actually because of the opportunities mm. that come with it. You know, there is so much, um, even in storytelling, you know, we when we think of um, women creators, um, often we tend to think of women-led stories, so stories about female characters. But actually, on this panel itself, you know, we have Lena, who's done a a, a, a very moving and very uh, uh, tough documentary, if I may say so. And Ashwini, you know, the the, the short um, that she uh, that she made for um, Ankahi Kahaniya, one of our anthologies, is about a male character and his vulnerability when he moves to the city, and the the lens with which they're able to actually portray those stories. That's perhaps some something um, that, that comes because of the fact that they're women. So I think I, I see it as, uh, as an opportunity, as a privilege. Um, and I don't think we can you know, dissociate the fact that, what, irrespective of whatever your gender is, you know, it is, it is something you own. But yes, it's not a hindrance at all. And especially at Netflix, it's not a hindrance. If anything, being part of an organization where you have so many female leaders, you feel even more empowered you know, to speak up, to share your point of view, because you see everyone else around you doing that. So Lena, from what I understand from Chani and Pratiksha as well, we are a few percentage of, uh, say, the urban elite who sit here and who can even afford to talk like that. But if you see beyond urban India, semi urban, rural, down to the least common denominator, dowry is still very much normal, abuse is still very much normal. And this conversation somewhere has not percolated to the least common denominator. So as a filmmaker, and you having the power to have that mass media to communicate, what is the kind of tectonic shift that you all are trying to bring in other platforms as well, so that the narrative changes and normalizing women to be on an even keel with a man takes place? See, we are filmmakers, so I mean, we do communicate through films. And um, I mean, in the last two or three films that I've made, including this documentary, the discussion has reached to places that even I didn't expect. Hmm. You know, so I think discussion is the beginning of change. It's going to take a really long time. I mean, we've been ruled by patriarchy for so long, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, that's why, I mean, I say, even in content, I say it's still wanting. We hmm. still can go a really long way. Hmm. I mean, these times have empowered us to be able to do that. Um, but I feel like we should do much, much more. I don't think we've really juiced it even you know, to the maximum that we have the power right now. And Ashwini, how, what is your plan? How are you planning to juice this even further to ensure that there are more women-centric stories that are being told, stories that normalize uh, the gender equality and leave aside the predisposition of misogyny and sexism Can that I we've seen over the past few years. Yes, Can please. I, I think we should just, I, th I, I hope this uh, Women's Day we can get rid of the boxes of the women-centric. Yes. And you know, really, yeah, I think that should be a beginning because that is something we even feed to the audience. Hmm. So they feel, oh, this is different. You're women-centric, you know, female director. Hai. Hmm. I think we have to start dropping the labels and really, if that is a movement that we can start this Women's Day, it'll be great. And you're right, yeah. but there is some level of overcompensation that we're doing because of the years of misogyny and sexism that we've seen even in the film creation space, right? So I'll just give you a kind of, uh, uh, a kind of dichotomy or a kind, uh, 
so when I was in advertising, I was in a corporate world and I was mm. handling brands like Unilever, PNG, and those kind of brands. And most of my clients and most of my business heads and even the creative people or even the even the decision makers on the other side were all women. So I didn't kind of find this difference between who's sitting in the boardroom and who's taking the decisions is because we used to handle sanitary napkins and we were handling cars. So mm. that was the kind of difference. And then, uh, and we were telling all kinds of stories. When you ca uh, Then when I came into this side, which is like behind the camera, um, and I was telling stories here, uh, it was important for me to kind of compensate some stories which would have a larger purpose in society. So it was like, whether it was Nilpati Sanata or whether it was uh, my other films, I had to tell those stories because I felt that education is the need of the hour for girls and girls need to be educated. So maybe if I make a film which, which talks about education, if it talks about women getting empowered on their own way, it would make a difference. But uh, this was six years back. Now I feel that we, uh, we, we should eradicate this word called women-centric films is because the more and more stories we say which is not which is not only about the woman but it it's about a a a, a complete community a complete uh, a story which is related to the woman but surrounded by a lot of other characters whether the male uh, older women yeah. doesn't matter or younger children doesn't yeah. matter but the main protagonist can be the woman but we don't have to pinpoint and say, hey, this is a woman-centric film and you need to watch it. But but that's the point, right, Tahira? Uh, over the years, we, when we watched all these mainstream masala movies, you always had that one action hero. And often, the female lead has accused uh, the male of earning more and producers not paying them enough. And there has been uh, pay parity that many actresses have voiced even today. Uh, so... And hence, uh, you'd start focusing more on what more we can do for women. And that's where the dis this discussion even stems from. I think it's very interesting to know that, um, you know, I think what Ashwini was trying to say, I can pinpoint a, to a very good example from our panelists only. I think that mm. film, uh, Puglet, stands for that, you know. You have a woman, and it's a story around her, and there are a lot of characters supporting her. Mm. But not once do you feel that it's a woman driven mm -hmm. phenomena mm -hmm. it's it's something which has happened in her life mm -hmm. she's lost her husband and mm -hmm. it's very uh, interesting the dynamics that happened between the family so um yeah and i also feel um when we talk about women and women centric stories i feel they're very interesting now because enough has not been said if at all whatever has been said i particularly feel that there is always um, a woman between her 20 to 30 and her that age group is represented more on cinema i know more about this particular age group but what about the below the 20s there are 13 year olds there are 18 year olds there are eight year olds i love watched a lovely film this week it's called Petit manan and it's about two it's a lovely film it's about two eight year old girls and it's a beautiful world i think the world is deprived of these stories how about the women in their 40s and their 50s and according to indian cinema very honestly 30 ke upar koi zinda nahi aur 20 ke niche bhi koi zinda nahi hai so you know but this is why it makes it so interesting and then we label it it's woman centric because yeah you don't know enough and there is so much that we need to tell and then i just think it the onus lies on women filmmakers to actually tell the world are bhai ye bhi sab kuch hai kyunki nahi dikh raha aadmiyon ko aur nahi darshaya gaya abhi so guneet uh, in a large way it is about breaking the gender stereotypes as well right because we've always known a, a heroine of the film or the lead protagonist to be a certain age look a certain way dress a certain way once she's older you know, not too many were casting her, but now with the advent of OTT and the kind of content we're consuming in Netflix, and like, like Tahira said, we are being able to see a woman's story or a man's story for that matter across age groups, diverse topics today. So somewhere is the audience also becoming more discerning as we go along the way? Absolutely. I think the whole <clears throat> conversation of, the whole conversation has been hero. Hmm. You know, hmm. you know, so, uh, 
जब हीरो सेंट्रिक हो सकता है हर चीज तो आई कम फ्रॉम अ स्कूल के क्यों नहीं हो सकता वेमेन सेंट्रिक मतलब hmm. क्योंकि हमारी जनरल लैंग्वेज एक वो होता ना सिनेम टू सिनेमा इज हीरो इट्स नॉट मतलब वाइज एंड दैट इज वाई फिल्म लाइक वंडर वुमन फिल्म लाइक लार्ज फुटप्रिंट फिल्म और यू नो इवन शोज सो मेनी सीरीज आई मीन आई रिसेंटली सो एम इन पैरिस और इट इज इवन मसाबा मसाबा यू नो एंड इवन आई वुड से द वंडरफुल नीना जीज जर्नी यू नो ऑन टू पॉइंट ओ वर्जन सो मच ऑपरचुनिटी and 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 you have to hear her talk where her eyes light up and say that at my age I'm getting so much opportunity now is the time, you know. So the power of uh, democratizing content, making it easily accessible to everyone, and letting people in their houses decide what they want to see and what mm -hmm. they want to consume is also defining decisions of more content, right? And that and and you see a large spread of uh, films led by women. uh on screen off screen and even when there are lar as of today the conversation is so strong i am hopelessly optimistic <clears throat> i agree there is a lot more work to be done there is still less than 5% women behind the screen but uh even now when in large mainstream there is misogyny and there is patriarchy it's called out because mm. of again the digital world that we mm. are in right there is Twitter and there is Instagram and there is Facebook and there is a very large conversation discussion that happens. But in the mainstream, अगर आज सब कुछ hero है तो बहुत आज women centric भी हो रहा है. It is every generation has stereotypes to break and we are. I think the Me Too movement did expand the conversation. It did help in start the conversation. Don't think cinema can change the world. Definitely can start a discussion like Lena said, and uh, I think we are in a golden phase. I I look at it as an opportunity. I look at it as doubling down on that opportunity. Can I can I yeah. ask a question? Just as people who take decisions, you know, as producers, directors, everything else. First of all, I think writers have become kings right now. So kudos to you guys who are writing that. But I want to ask you: Do you consciously take that decision? Because I know I do. I I decide. I definitely want a woman in my writers room. for certain things like one of the series we are producing for them one of the subjects is a woman and i definitely was very very sure that either the writer or the director has to be a woman because i do want to see so i want to know whether you guys take those kind of calls for um, yeah so uh, this is a very uh, important question is that uh, and i was just thinking about it when gunit was talking is that it is very important that we take a conscious fearless call on what kind of stories we want to say and it's a chain reaction it's just not about me thinking okay i want to tell a story like this but then you also need a producer who can back or a studio who can back your story and say we are going to go all out and we are going to go with that conviction which is fearless because there will be a whole see the moment we start thinking of ifs and buts oh you know what this is uh this is the story so we need a uh we need a lead who is a female hero and okay what are going to be the economics now if you start thinking of all those mm. things mm. then you are doomed at ground zero is because your starting point is only oh should we or should we not but if i i feel that today's storytellers are fearless they are okay and that's also because of the opening up of platforms the opening up of ideas and the uh, the the people sitting uh, uh, on the other side who are the business guys it's like guys like pratiksha who would call and say hey you know what let's just do this let's just get some ideas which is there that gives us a storytellers hope is because they saying hey you know what there is someone who's sitting there and who's telling us that we can do this few years before this was not possible that if i have one story and it's like okay iska kya karenge abhi hmm. what are we going to do right. because it is not going to be any bio right so you know, just Prateek, just, just talking yeah. about, just answering your question and talking about my decision making here myself as a producer i definitely consciously support more uh women stories women yeah. filmmakers it's a conscious lens um and uh, that having <coughs> said having said that i do think that that has even come to me post the me to movement yeah. uh mm -hmm. in the last few years it's not that i knew that this is what i wanted to do but there has definitely been an awakening in fact i do have remake rights of one of the most popular films in the world which is two men and their friendship and i and i'm determined to make it as two women and their friendship because why not yeah and, and now is the time in your storytelling methodology also gunita use 
you know, bringing about that particular change because initially we used to see uh, in the early 90s a lot of casual sexism, uh, a lot of misogyny just pass off as something which was very normal for laughs. But now I think that is becoming less tolerated and I see that in your work too. Yeah, I think, and I've always said that. In fact, you know, I feel very empowered with working with uh, people like Pratiksha, Tahira and, and every day, uh, even clarity of feminism because I don't think we're born with clarity of what is feminism, hmm. what, how far can we push our uh, conversation on the table, our seat, our seat on the table, how, f how assertive can we be uh, hmm. to get our choices uh, and, and to see them through till the end. So I think forming a tribe, uh, may having those like-minded people, people is the most empowering thing that one can do. And, and once they are also in decision making capacities and yeah, and it takes time i mean i've been around it for a decade and a half so i feel you know you romanticize those films i just to answer your question i know the question was for guneet but um i happen to watch man because hmm. I, I don't, if you remember the amir khan yeah. film yeah. and i really uh, fantasize romanticize the entire uh, picture when i was young because it's tragedy romance yeah. way, wo, wo, you live on that and you know you're a teenager you're all and i just happened to you know i was in this nostalgia mode i was like I'll, let me just play this again and i was like he is pulling her pushing her throwing her forcing every i'm i'm sure even the characters do will not be able to relate to the story which was tell, told at that time yeah but the story told at that time uh, was you know left an impression on the decision makers who are today yeah. You know, the youth has grown. They, they were about 14, 15 to now they are 30, 28, 35. I just feel the kind of cinema that we are making now will definitely change the narrative a couple of years down the line because there is genuinely zero tolerance, especially when there are female uh, people, directors, craft uh, behind the lens. I think there is zero tolerance for sexism. Thank you all very much. We're thank completely you. out of time. But thank you all for this oh, wonderful yeah. discussion. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.